This video is designed to demonstrate how to use Stata to uh, conduct an exploratory factor analysis to look at the underlying dimensions of an instrument or a scale that you might have developed. And in this case, um, we'll be doing a principal components analysis, a, a type of factor analysis, using data collected by Andy Field. And what he did was he developed what's called the SPSS Anxiety Scale. And so he wrote 23 items and had individuals uh, specify whether they strongly disagreed, disagree, neutral, agree, or strongly agree with these statements. And you can see that, uh, for example, statistics make me cry. I dream that Pearson is attacking me with correlation coefficients. All computers hate me. I've never been good at mathematics. So part of this is determining if this scale represents one unitary construct or trait, or are there underlying dimensions? For example, is it measuring not only SPSS anxiety in general, but is it measuring certain facets of SPSS anxiety? Uh, is it assessing individuals' perceptions of using computers? Is it assessing their perceptions of mathematics, etc.? So this is what the exploratory factor analysis will help us to do and find out. So I'm going to close this, and then I'm going to open the data. So you can see that I have my uh, data here, and um, these are the questions, and the questions are also written out. And this is the command that's, that was uh, instituted in Stata to be able to open that data file. Now, if I want to see what the data looks like and check it, I can go to my data browser, and I can make sure that my uh, data looks correct, that I have, you know, 23 items, and that I have uh, all my cases. And in this instance, um, Andy Field collected data from over 2,500 individuals, so his sample size was more than adequate to conduct this uh, exploratory factor analysis. The first thing we like to do is um, test the assumptions or examine the assumptions of factor analysis. One of them should be that items are correlated. Uh, not too highly correlated, but there are there is relationships between items. And what we can do is go to summaries, or statistics and summary tables and tests, summary and statistics, descriptive statistics, and correlations and covariances. And in this case, since we want to correlate all the variables, we can um, just click on submit. And so what this will do is provide us with a um, correlation matrix. And so you can see how these items relate to one another. Okay, so we want our items to be somewhat correlated, but we don't want them to be too highly correlated, because if they're too highly correlated, then they're not uniquely contributing to explaining uh, the matrix, uh, the data matrix for this particular uh, 23 question scale. The next thing we want to do is we want to um, find out what the value is or the significance is of the Bartlett's test of sphericity. That tells us if the uh, if we have sufficient adequate uh, correlations. And then we also want to determine the uh, KMO value or the Kaiser Meyer Oakland measure of sampling adequacy. Now to do that we have to go 
um, to search and we can search here in the Macintosh version or in the Windows version we can go to help and we can go to search and the first what we want to search for is a command called factor test and so we go OK and we see that we have one package that was developed um, by an individual for use with Stata and so we can click on that and then if you scroll down you'll see a uh, a link to install that package and so we'll go ahead and install it and so we have that installed for our use and so now what we can do is we can type a command because this particular um, analysis is not located in the um, in the pull down menu for our statistical analysis so we type in the command factor test and then we can t type in Q01 for question number one through Q23. And so what that will do is that will um, uh, analyze all 23 items. And so then we uh, click enter and we can see we get the value for the determinant, the value for Bartlett's test of sphericity. And we want this value to be significant because what it means is then that the variables are correlated enough to where we can run our factor analysis. And then we have our Kaiser Mayer Oakland measure of sampling adequacy, um, which indicates uh, how well this will work in terms of a factor analysis for um, determining that there's just not a lot of overlap there's some overlap between items, but not enough to where it would um, produce uh, spurious results. So our values are in good shape. We want this to be significant, and we want this value to be 0.5 or above. So the higher this value is, the better. So the next thing we can do is we can... Um, run our factor analysis and so what we can do is go to statistics and we can go to um, multivariate and then factor analysis okay so what we can do then is put all our variables in and so that takes a little bit of time so we can enter them all this way and I'll go ahead and do that for now. And so we want to take our time because we uh, don't want to miss any of our variables because that will pr produce results that aren't accurate. This might be a time where you want, want to stop the video so that you can complete this part of the tasks for conducting the factor analysis. So let's make sure we have them all here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. See, I got two question 10, so that would be a mistake. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I have all my variables entered. And then I want to go to model 2, and I want to choose principal component factor. Okay? So that's really all I need to do in terms of running the factor analysis. So now I'm going to go and click on OK. And here what this shows me is that uh, I have done a principal component factor analysis. 
the number of observations is 2,571. Now, what I have here are my eigenvalues and then the proportion of variance that these eigenvalues explain in terms of the variability in the 23 items that have been analyzed. So the first factor or the first combination of items in that factor explain about 31 percent of the variability or the variance in these in this 23 item scale. The next uh, factor or component explains about seven and a half percent. The third component explains about uh, 5.7 percent and then the fourth factor explains about 5.3 percent. Typically what we look at in terms of how many factors to retain is when the eigenvalues exceed one. And so you can see that right here this would be the cutoff. Now this is not a uh, strict rule of thumb. What we have to do is look at um, the uniqueness of each item. We have to look at the communalities and the number of individuals uh, that are in the analysis. So I'm going to refer you to uh, Andy Field's book for more uh, in-depth information about how to uh, select the number of uh, components or factors, how you know how many to retain. Part of it is judgment. And remember, this is called an exploratory factor analysis. And you'll notice that uh, STATA has retained four factors. So it's identified the four factors that explain um, the most variance in terms of that 23 item survey. The uniqueness is the unique contribution of each item to explaining variability in the uh, data matrix. One minus the uniqueness is the communality. So for example, the communality for item one would be one minus 0.5654, which would be 0.4346. So just so you know, some people like to have those communalities so that they can make some uh, judgments about the quality of each item. Now, to make our factor structure more interpretable, one of the things that we do is we rotate our um, factors so that they're cleaner, so they're more interpretable. And we can do this one of two ways. I can write the command rotate, or I can go to statistics, multivariate, factor, and principal components, and post estimation, and rotate. And then in this case, I want to use a orthogonal rotation. I want to keep, maximize the distance between these factors orthogonally. Now, if I feel that the factors are related to one another, are not independent, then I can use several types of oblique um, rotations which allow these factors to correlate. But for this example, we're going to use Veramax. And so I'm going to go OK. And now what's happened is these factors are now, um, we have, are rotated so that they're more interpretable. However, what's difficult with these is that um, these values are not in any specific order. So there's one more program that we're going to install to be able to sort the factor loadings from high to low to make the factor structure in terms of the items that are loading or grouping together on each factor 
easier to interpret and determine. So if we go to help and search, there's a command called sort L. And what that means is sort loadings. So you can search for that. You can go OK. And then you'll see that there's three packages. We want this first one to sort the factor loadings. And so if I scroll down, I can click here and install that. And so now when I get this message on my screen, that means that package is installed. And so now I can type the command sortl, and now my factor loadings are sorted. So we can now see the pattern. So you notice that item 6, 18, 13, 7, 14, 10, 15 load on this first factor because they have the highest loadings of all the rest of the factor loadings across the four factors. Then if we look here where the break is, we see this next loading is 0 0.08. Well, this loading is 0 0.8498. So these next three items are loading on factor two. And then we see another break here where this next group of items to here, item 20, 21, 3, 12, 16, 4, 1, and 5 are loading on the third factor. And then the fourth factor, um, items 22, 9, 23, 2, and 19 are grouped together. Now, Stevens would say that there should be 0 0.200 uh, units difference between factor loadings for them to be unique. So in this case, um, we have some items that perhaps could be interpreted as cross-loaded. So item 19 is pretty close to uh, loading the same on factors 3 and 4. So we have to think about whether we want to eliminate that item or not. Um, it's According to Stevens, factor loadings uh, at 0.4 or greater are significant and important to interpret. And this item has uh, a large value for uniqueness. So um, again, this is an exploratory analysis. And um, what we're trying to do is reduce the data to get a parsimonious solution that helps us interpret not only the overall scale and its meaning, but those underlying dimensions. Now, another important thing that goes along with instrument development is calculating the internal consistency reliability, or coefficient alpha. So we do that for the whole scale, and then we also do that for each factor. So to do that, we can go to statistics, multivariate, and then cone box alpha. And in this case, we want to use all the variables. So we're going to use the overall scale. I can do this. I can enter all these in. or um, one of the things I can do is click on my command here, and uh, I can replace this with, uh, I can, um, there's a couple things. I want to take this off the end, PFC, and I can copy these items in. Start over again so I can copy and paste them in. Okay, so that so I have them all there, and I can run the alpha that way, or I can simply um, put alpha in front of the 23 items 
and run the analysis. And so my coefficient alpha, and I can do it here too, just to show you. So my coefficient alpha for the entire scale is 0.89, which is very good. You know, typically we want internal consistency reliability to be at least 0 0.80. And then I want to do that for my next factor. So for my next factor, um, I want to, um, and it might be easier to do it using the uh, pull down menu because you don't have as many items, is, um, so I'll take those out. And my next factor consists of, um, uh, or my first factor consists of item six, Eighteen thirteen seven fourteen ten. and 15. So then I can submit. And so my internal consistency reliability for uh, factor 1 is 0.82. And so that's that's very good as well. My second factor consisted of three items. If I look, you know, go back up here. And so those three items are uh, question 8, 17, and 11. So I can come here and go um, question eight, question 16, and question 11. And again, I can submit and my uh, coefficient alpha is 0.69. I think that is not correct. I think I, um, yeah, I used the wrong item here. That's why that's not correct. So I've got to get item six, 17 instead of 16. Okay, there we go. So now my coefficient alpha is what I expected it to be, 0.82, which is very good. So again, you know, you got to be careful when entering the items uh, into the window. Factor three, let's see where the, consists of question 20, 21, 3, question 12, question 16, question 4, question 1, and question 5. And so we're going to look at the reliability of these um, items, submit, and again, that third factor, um, the reliability coefficient is very good. It's above 0 0.80. And then finally, our last factor, factor four, is um, consists of question 22, Question 9, question 23, question 2, and question 19. So now we're going to look at the reliability of these uh, five items. 
And we can see for these five items, the reliability is very low. It's points, well, rounding off 0 0.60. Um, even for exploratory studies, uh, we like our reliability to be 0 0.70. So this is an indication that we may need to um, perhaps drop some items, add items, refine our items to uh, get a better uh, reliability coefficient here. So now that you know how to do these things in terms of what's required for um, providing construct uh, validity evidence for construct validity, uh, now is the time to kind of look at these items. So, you know, if I look at the first factor, item six, I have little experience with computers. Item 18, SPSS always crashes when I try to use it. Question 13, I worry that I will cause irreparable damage because of my incompetence with computers. Question 7, all computers hate me. Question 14, computers have minds of their own and deliberately go wrong whenever I use them. Uh, question 10, Computers are useful for only playing games. And then question 15, computers are out to get me. So clearly that factor one uh, is could be named individuals' perceptions of computers or their experience of computers. So the goal is to look at these questions and try to determine a theme or some way to... Um, name the construct that those questions are capturing. And then that would be the same way with factor two. So factor two, um, we have question eight. I've never been good at mathematics. Question 17, um, I slip into a coma whenever I see an equation. And then question uh, 11, I did badly at mathematics at school. So we might interpret that factor as fear of mathematics, mathematics anxiety. So I think you, uh, I think you s get the idea here of what and how we how we can use factor analysis to provide this validity evidence, and then also how we can determine how um, internally consistent. Uh, our scale is measuring not only the overall uh, 23 items that it's designed to, that were that were created, but also how the scale consistent consistently measures the um, or how consistently the items that make up a factor consistently measure the construct. So that first construct that we um, that we calculated the internal consistency reliability for was um, we said uh, experience or fear of computers. I hope this um, video was helpful. Um, thank you for listening.